Hey guys, it's Harv, good to see you. So the other day I did a video about my thoughts on the Sony FX6 and how I, I thought it would be incredible, but was it worth the money and that kind of thing? I'll link it below if you want to see that, but I made a comment in that video which I think was taken quite the wrong way. And I think the gist of the misunderstanding was that people thought I was saying that you should only use S-Log3 and never use s Cinetone. That's definitely not what I was saying at all. And on top of that, I had lots of anti-S-Log3 comments. People said things like that you don't need it, that it's pointless, that you just don't need that dynamic range and the Cine profiles are enough. And that just got me wondering, do you guys not like S-Log3? So in a way, I want to plead my case for using S-Log3 and I want to also make the correction that I don't think it's worth using S-Log3 all the time. In fact, for these videos that I do on the sofa here, I never use S-Log3. This is actually the PP10 profile that you'll see in my how to set up the A7S III video that I did, uh, which I'll link below if you want to copy those settings. But before we get into it, please do me a huge favor. If you're already a subscriber, definitely hit the notification bell next to your subscribe button. That just makes the biggest difference in the world to me. And if you've not seen it, I've just released a video that practically broke my brain. It's about how to upload videos to YouTube and avoid banding that happens from YouTube compression and that kind of thing. I did my best, I did so much work on it and I I don't, I don't wanna say that I came up with a definitive solution but you really should check it out. It's interesting and um, there are some helpful tips and just for, for, the, for the amount that it broke my brain, please do me a favor, have a look at it and um, let me know what you think. So for the record, I don't think you should use S-Log3 all the time. However, I would argue that it's also not just to have 15 stops of dynamic range. That's not the reason that I would use S-Log3. The reasons I use it are twofold. And the first one is it's so much easier to correct your exposure if you make any kind of mistake. And I know what you're saying, just get it right in camera, of course, obviously. But you never know, sometimes, you know, if you're using a gimbal, for example, and all you have to work off is the monitor on the back of the camera, and then they're never that great. They're never gonna be as good as an external monitor, so it's, there's a good chance you could misjudge the exposure slightly, and S-Log3 just gives you those couple of stops either end at the shadows and the highlights just to pull it, push it and pull it, and, and get it right. And the second reason for me is in the way that I like to color grade. And what I like to do is I like to use curves fairly aggressively when I color grade. I don't do them in this video, but most other things that I do, I will add a instance of color curves and then I'll be adding loads of different control points and I'll push and pull them to see what looks best. Nothing too aggressive, but I like to extract all the dynamic range and all the detail that I can from those color curves and that is just not something you can do with a linear profile. On top of that, I feel like there's an impression that S-Log3 takes too long to grade, which is possible, I suppose, but this clip was graded with only one thing and that's Alistair Chapman's S-Log3 to Venice lookup table. It gives you a punchy, contrasty, out of camera look with amazing looking skin tones and I literally have made no other tweaks whatsoever. So there you have an easy s Cinetone style look with the additional dynamic range that S-Log3 gives you and all without spending loads of time on grading. Oh, and it's free as well, I didn't mention that. I will link it below for you. So there's definitely a discussion here. I know a few people that would say, well, if you're not gonna shoot in S-Log3, then why bother shooting in 10-bit when, to be honest, with one of these linear profiles, an 8-bit Kodak probably will be fine. And for the record, no, I don't think that I would still shoot 10-bit because 10-bit. Anyway, that's all I've got for you this time. Do me a big favor, let's discuss this and not argue about this because for some reason, this topic gets people really heated and um, I can't work out why. It's fun though. I also hope you enjoy these videos. They're just kind of quite quick and off the cuff and I really enjoy doing them. So if you do too, definitely let me know. Leave me a like, that would be amazing. And I'll see you next time.